Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. It's Russell with Ink and Paper Vlog and I'm back at Green Apple Books on the park with Noah. He's back. Hey, I'm back. You know, he did our first video and you guys were so receptive and you liked a bunch of his recommendations. So he's back to recommend some more books from you today. And we're gonna do the same thing that we did last time with him. We had some new stuff and some old stuff, some stuff new out in paperback. So he's gonna mix it up. He likes translated literature. He likes stuff from um, little tiny presses. So he's definitely gonna put a lot of really cool stuff on your radar. So yeah. let's get started. Starta. Let's get started. Starta. All Let's right. get started, Noah. Where are we where are we beginning? Yeah, so John couldn't join us today, so I thought I'd read one of his recommendations first. Perfect. Um, this is Blue Self Portrait by Noemi Lefebvre, and it's translated by Sophie Lewis, who's a really great translator. Okay. Um, and this one's out from uh, Transit Books in Oakland, and I'll just read you what he has to say about it. I'm not sure I can prepare you for this book. I thought I knew what I was getting into and a mere 140 pages later, I landed on a different continent entirely. Lefebvre has produced a riveting book in Blue Self-Portrait, one that investigates the variations of a thought of a memory. Our protagonist looks at her exchange with a pianist from every possible vantage point, arriving at both confusion and conclusion within the same second. Lefebvre is a master of the sentence, and some of these passages unfurl with all the introspection and I can't read his handwriting. <laughs> Something of Marcel Proust. <laughs> A most welcome import into our uh, canon. Canon. Thank you. His handwriting's not great. I can speak a little bit of John, it appears. So, yeah. see, he's not even here, and he's also giving us a recommendation, and that is Blue Self-Portrait by Noemi, say her last name? Lefebvre. Lefebvre, translated from the French by Sophie Lewis, out by Transit Books, and Transit Books is a local publisher to us here in the Bay Area, and they are fantastic, so support them yeah. if you have a chance. Okay. All right, next we have Disoriental by Negar Javadi. Um, another French book. Uh, this one is about an Iranian emigre into into France uh, in the contemporary era. I think she works as a, uh, a radio DJ, and um, it's sort of while she's sitting in a fertility clinic in her very modern Parisian life by herself, she's kind of recapping in her mind her entire family history. So it sort of goes back and forth between the present day and like the late nineteenth century with her like great-grandfather who's this sort of mythical figure in the mountains in Iran and uh, has like a harem with 28 wives oh. and yeah it's kind of nuts so she's sort of like trying to bridge these gaps in her cultures well and I know I've told you guys before Europa editions mm -hmm. will never let you down they are okay. fantastic I just got this book from them and I cannot wait to read it so again that's disoriental say the author's name uh, Nega Javadi this is why I bring him along. You know I would have butchered that. Wait, and this is actually translated, translated too, yeah. so let's get that in. Translated by Tina Cover from the French. So I'm gonna put that up there for you. You guys are gonna see that one again, I promise you. Yeah, and it was a bestseller in France, for what that's worth. <laughs> Um, all right, now we have The Chandelier by Clarice Lee Spector. This has a real shiny cover, so hopefully you guys can see that one. Yeah, um, so this one, it's sort of a, a big deal that this is coming out now. It's this, it's her second novel, for those of you who know Clarice Lee Spector. She's uh, a modernist writer from Brazil from the 40s, um, and she's sort of seen a huge resurgence in the last decade. They're sort of retranslating a lot of her works and translating the ones that have never appeared in English, like this one. Um, so this is going to be translated from the Portuguese. It's by uh, Benjamin Moser and Magdalena Edwards. Uh, Benjamin Moser has sort of been spearheading this whole uh, uh, effort to bring Clarice City Spectre back into the canon uh, from New Directions Press. Awesome. Um, and yeah, this one's, it's dense, I will warn you, um, not for the faint of heart maybe, there's a lot to unpack in every sentence, but her use of language is spectacular. Like, I've never seen anyone use an adjective the way that she does. Um, it's sometimes surprising, sometimes really striking. Um, but it, it takes a while to unpack. You can almost read it like poetry. Okay. What's the basic story are you looking at? Um, it's sort of about the collapse of the aristocracy in rural Brazil. Um, oh, interesting. She, the, the main character is, she and her brother are um, very poor, but they live in this huge mansion that is falling apart around them, and they've witnessed a man drown. Um, and so the story sort of takes off from there. They have this secret, um, and it's set in this like really gorgeous, um, disintegrating remnant of the bourgeoisie. Oh, interesting. Uh, if you had to compare her style to a writer, could mm -hmm. you think of someone? 
Yeah, I mean, I think she's been compared to Virginia Woolf a lot. Oh, okay. Yeah. I know I have a bunch of people on my channel that <laughs> love themselves to Virginia Woolf. So that's The Chandelier by... Uh, Clarice Shelley Spector. Translated from the Portuguese. And again, no one never picks a cover that isn't gorgeous. Have you noticed that? He has a thing for books with amazing covers. Book design's important. And I'm just going to tell you right now, the next two are awesome. So yeah, here we yeah, go. Yeah, ready there. for this one. And <laughs> have you guys noticed also he picks a lot of translated fiction? So I know translated fiction is really big for a bunch of you. So great recommendations. Happy to. Another fantastic cover, by the way. Who's, what's this one about? Uh, Lion Cross Point by Masatsugu Ono. Um, it's an Akutagawa Prize winner. Put it up here um, real quick. It's the most prestigious prize in Japan, and this one is a really beautiful story about a, a little kid. He is from Tokyo, and his mother has disappeared, and his brother has died, so he goes to live with his family in rural Japan. Um, and it's sort of this meditation on trauma and um, family and belonging. Uh, it's, it's really sweet. The, the narrator is like, I think he's like eight. And the, the way that it's written is just so endearing um, and sometimes heartbreaking. Uh, it's also a bit of a ghost story. There's this element of the supernatural or the surreal going on. There's an octopus um, and a dolphin. And it, there's a lot going on but in a few pages, but it's, it's really good. Um, I will put out a content warning for domestic violence. Uh, if okay. anyone's triggered by that, it could be, it could be pretty triggering. Um, okay. Hard to read. And so again, this is Lion Cross Point by? Masatsugo, Matsusugu Ono. Oh Translated by uh, Ingus Turville mm -hmm. from the Japanese. And again, you guys look at that cover. And you told me something about this publisher. Yes, this is another local publisher, another Bay Area uh, publisher. This is Two Lines Press, which is run by the Center for the Art of Translation. Uh, they do exclusively books translated from other languages, and this is their first hardcover book. Yeah, and they knocked it out of the park. They really did. They really did. Yeah. So this one may be going on my pile. So, good. Okay, and what is our last recommendation? Finally, this one, it's been out for a while, but it's new in paperback. It's The Night Ocean by Paul Lafarge. Uh, we had Paul Lafarge here last October, I want to say, um, and this book is really cool. It's um, about H.P. Lovecraft in a lot of ways, and I've never read any H.P. Lovecraft, and I loved this one. So for fans of Lovecraft or not, it's a good choice. Uh, it's sort of a literary mystery uh, this the the main character uh, her husband goes missing trying to figure out all these mysteries about maybe like a lost Lovecraft novel or this critic of Lovecraft who has disappeared um, and definitely for fans of Roberto Bolaño it it reads a lot like the savage detectives this sort of like literary intrigue and like sub clicks you get this like really good uh, perspective into like the weird fiction fandom in oh, the, like in the twentieth in the twentieth century, it's like it's it's bizarre. You know, if you're not a part of it, you have no idea what's going on in there. But everything, everyone involved, feels like so self-important, and it's just a <laughs> blast to read through. Yeah, cool. That's the Night Ocean by Paul Lafarge, and I'm gonna bring that cover up that for you right there. And that oh has a quote of, comparing it to Murakami on the back. So there you, there you go. go, guys. There you go. As always, thank you, Noah, for coming back. Yeah, it's good to be back. I'm glad you guys liked my recommendations last time, and thanks for having me on the show again. And always, as a reminder, guys, we have a deal going on with Green Apple Books. Down below, you'll find a code for 10% off and 99 cent shipping across the United States. And if you come into the bookstore, talk to Noah, mention his video, uh, he'll give you the 10% off in person Definitely. at both of the Green Apple Books locations. So until next time, happy reading. Thanks, Noah. Thank you. We'll see you later. Take care.